Hey, Steve and Andy, how is it today? How is it today? Happy Tuesday. Thank you, Scott. Hello, Andy. Hello, Steve. Hi, Scott, and hi, everybody. All right, so let's get started. Welcome to the Trade of the Week uh, themed afternoon webinar. We have a few of them. Uh, but this afternoon, we'll start off as usual with the disclaimer. Anything you see or hear on these webinars should not be extruded as financial advice. Uh, their opinions, we're demonstrating the software, demonstrating some ideas. So um, we're not licensed. So in any, we're a software as a, as a subscription company. Nothing should really ever be construed as professional financial advice because we're certainly not even licensed to do so. So we'll get that out of the way. All right, so um, if you're new to Trade Ideas, uh, it's been around for about 14 years. I've been using it since day one, and so has Andy for the most part. And uh, we've seen a lot of iterations uh, come and uh, continue to evolve with newer additions and newer versions over the years. What I'm getting at is it's a very rich program with a lot of features and a lot of tools. And there's uh, no real one right way to learn it quickly. Uh, it requires a little, little bit of time. Um, sometimes just a few days isn't enough. Uh, really, it does take a good couple of weeks to kind of get feel for the power and the ability to um, use in real time and get the information that we're we're looking for. So, because of that, you know, we we recognize that we have these webinars in the afternoons and the mornings. We also have Barry's live trading room, which is where most of the people do hang out. Um, it's a free live trading room, which is not always the case out there, especially at the caliber and quality that Barry's giving. And um, it's live Monday through Friday from bell to bell for the most part. And Barry's very generous with his time and uh, talks a lot about trade ideas, answers a lot of questions. So it's always a great place. He reminds us, send them into my room if they have a question and they need something to be demonstrated. So there's that ability to help get up to speed. Um, the afternoon webinars, such as we're doing right now, are also a, a bit to try and help people use the program to the best of its abilities. But really important are um, a couple things. The Friday session, we don't have any webinars on Fridays, but we have a uh, two to three hour live tech forum where people can come in, ask questions, and we demonstrate them live in real time for people. So very important to attend those if you think that might be of benefit to you. And then lastly, uh, the TI University, it's Monday through Thursday. It's a recurring class. We do it live, but we also have recorded versions. And uh, it's, it's a great place to start and really get uh, the basics you know, early in the week and kind of go more into the advanced stuff later in the week. Um, that also really helps get people up to speed on our very in-depth, powerful, real-time analytical program we call Trade Ideas. And so that brings us, of course, to the uh, weekly theme slide here. It's uh, man and machine combined, which is just basically a reminder that um, there's really nothing out there or nobody out there having success that just flips a switch on a machine, turns your back and plays golf and fills out deposit slips at the bank. It just doesn't work that way. Um, the technology from here forward, especially with trade ideas, is something that the discretionary human being can use alongside as their best tool, their best companion. Let the let the, let, let the technology sift through the moundless ends of metadata and give us a couple of interesting gems and curated ideas. And so that's really always been the theme with customizing trade idea scans, but even more so lately with uh, the AI uh, as well. So we'll talk about a few of those items going forward. So uh, today's agenda kind of follows the, the theme of uh, most weeks. So I've got some ideas and some con um, some comments for sure on the market cap, on what recap about what's been going on. Um, definitely an interesting day in the, the AI for uh, Holly. And lastly, um, we have uh, the trade of the week, CVNA, which did not work out well this week, unfortunately. They don't all work out well, but we'll break it down and talk about how we can best maximize or minimize our um, risk. And lastly, uh, I've got a few thoughts on kind of how the market structure works these days. I'm going to give a few examples of um, what uh, Muted. what makes up our market. It used to be human beings and market makers and their charts and their price action and their candles had a an easy easier way of kind of tracking them. We've got now we've got a lot of noise, and I, I want to show you a couple examples of some things to possibly consider um, when you're looking for an entry or maybe even worried about uh, where your stop is going to be. Um, it'll make sense when we get to that point. I've got a, I've got a thought here on the sector glance, which kind of also dovetails into setting a few alerts 
uh, to go forward for the remainder um, of the week. And we'll check in on the ones that uh, we had last week as well. So without further, we're going to start with a uh, market recap here. Wow, that was a big, big catch that last candle in the spy. Jeez, wasn't paying attention to that. Um, so if a lot of you uh, were in uh, Jamie's uh, webinar yesterday, uh, we did this little exercise right here. We talked about last week, the big interest level was obviously the 50 day moving average, but even more important, this pivot line up here in orange, the pivot line, you know, it has a lot of merit going back in history. There's a lot of levels, reasons for this level. And um, what I had said last week was, you know, the bulls better find a way to get back and close above this 50 day moving average. And more importantly, <clears throat> this orange pivot line and not only do it once, not just wick through and fall back and close in the range, do it with this decisiveness. Give us a few solid days of closing prices above that level. And well, what do you know? We asked for it and we got it. A really nice push and a candle above with a definitive close last week and then two more trailing days behind it including today yesterday um, nothing but closing candles remaining above this pivot line which is what I said the bulls needed to do to get back in control and they did it and so here we are um, you know uh, it's a much different market than it was back here with these volatile long candles moving averages getting twisted back and forth um, the market hasn't, you know, been in this kind of a position basically since, you know, back here when we were back above all of our moving averages, and we are again. And this 10 period is probably going to come up. And I had said yesterday in uh, January that um, you know, coming into today, the price action to today, and maybe a couple days this week, is perfectly acceptable for a little bit of range bound pullback for some consolidation for a possible move higher out of that base. That's what the bulls want to see. Um, what we don't want to see, obviously, is a close to come back down below this orange line and all things considered the way the price action has been. It doesn't seem like that's threatening unless we get some sort of a giant black swan that says otherwise. But that's really the story of what's going on in, in the spiders. So we've come out of this volatile mess down here and the bulls have regained momentum as far as I'm concerned. Just hold above this, you know, and it's also interesting to add here the blue 50 day moving average is probably going to converge perfectly tomorrow when we get our new data and that orange pivot line and the 50 day moving average line, they're gonna join forces and they're gonna be a super level of hopefully higher support, higher highs and higher lows. So that's the story over there in the S&P 500 NASDAQ. Um, same thing, uh, didn't have a pivot line in there because it wasn't really as pronounced as the S&P, but same story going over there. The 50 day period was just wreaking havoc on price action until we came into that big day where everything popped above and has closed. Matter of fact, the NASDAQ gave us just a beautiful textbook back and fill today. Um, not so much in the S&P, but boy, we got a lot of constructive work done today. We got most of this gap filled and we tested the 50 day moving average. And by the end of the day, we see a giant push up. The bulls popped in at the end, whatever you want to call it, market makers squaring up. That's a different argument for a different day. But the buyers stepped in at the end of the day, which gave us a nice little bottoming tail, a upward thrusting wick, which is always a nice little icing on the cake if you're looking for a bullish candle. So we have that as well. So two really nice backing and testing, just right on cue, as you would expect. I, I would expect maybe the NASDAQ could say the coast is clear in terms of any uh, backwards uh, momentum. You know, this market still is a three steps forward, two steps back mechanism, and that uh, we just kind of had our two steps back right there. Wouldn't be surprised to see us move higher. Um, also, always a dangerous phrase when it comes to uh, the price action, the coast is clear. So be careful. The coast is clear. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's why Andy's there to remind me not to speak in such definitive language. Yeah. But uh, the Dow, but I know um, yeah. Oof, look at that, just crazy close on the, whatever. Um, but nonetheless, that counts <laughs> at the end of the yep. day. That's the high of the day, that's the candle. The Dow is showing no sign. And by the way, this was one of the stronger ones, I think uh, for the most part, it was also extremely um, uh, loyal to holding its 200 day moving average down here on many attempts. So big solid level of buying and support in the Dow uh, down there. And now we get to the really, really interesting one which is really going to set the theme for a lot of the, the rest of the content today. And that was what Andy and I have always talked about, this IWM, always been a real lagger. Well, I want you to look at the last two days. Um, let's 
probably look at it on the intraday here. A lot of green yesterday and a lot more green today compared to the S&P going the opposite direction, forget that close. Compared to the NASDAQ going the opposite direction, forget that close. Um, IWM, and we had said this thing is gonna do something. It's either gonna fail at the 50 and roll over and the market will take notice and start to maybe get weak as well, or this thing is finally gonna pick up the rear and stop being the weak uh, animal in the herd and, and stop being, uh, pick, pick up the rear is what I mean to say, and start to catch up to what else has been happening. And so it seems as if a lot of the big money managers may have gotten the memo today for a big uh, asset allocation rotation into the small caps. And we've often said, when you see that IWM take off, pretty much throw away all your other scans because um, a lot of small caps and stocks under $5 and $10 are gonna have a good day. They just always seem to do so if big capital, if the IWM, uh, Russell 2000, gives us a backdrop and a reason um, to, to believe so. So that is kind of what happened today. And it's very interesting, not just today, but even yesterday, you know, as the SPY and the NASDAQ were weak, IWM was pushing higher um, all day long and then a beautiful follow through today. Now finally definitively closing through this 50 day moving average. I haven't seen the IWM look this uh, promising for, for quite some time. So that's really kind of the big story uh, today and it will certainly dovetail into some of the AI trades that came out today and some of the trades that uh, were performing better than the others. Um, you know, there's a little bit of a theme there but I'll kind of leave that for Andy unless he wants to comment on anything else market related here. No, no, you you covered it really well, Steve. Uh, there's nothing really to add, uh, you know, to the spies. Uh, other right. than other than don't overreact, you know, when you hear, you know, the talking heads, people on Twitter lately, oh, wait, we're headed for another all-time highs. Guys, really, it's a big picture. You look at it, we really haven't done a whole lot in the last year and a half, two years. It even seems like when we go to highs, we just kind of flounder around and find a way to settle back. So it's uh, uh, the reason I'm saying it's it's easy to get caught up, and and next thing you know, you're you're loading the boat up because we're going to all time highs, and your stuff's not going or falling apart. It's just it's just what I just we just hadn't had a really good strong bull run in a while. So mm. uh, I just I want to throw that out as a grain grain of salt there. Yeah, Tony makes a good point. I didn't catch Apple in the last 15 minutes, even moving higher after we speak. So that certainly helped uh, being as weighted as it was. And Marguerite, I didn't uh, forget about your question there. You know, if you've got, if you have an orange line in here, uh, let's pull it out. A couple things you can grab it. Look at my cursor change. Once my cursor changes to that guy right there, I can left click and hold it up and down. Or once the cursor changes, I can just hit the delete key and get rid of it that way. That's the first part. The second part, Marguerite, is making it stick. And making it stick means you've got to basically update, save your layout, update your default layout. So the next time when you start the program, you won't have that orange line in your charts. All right. All right. That's all for Are you, you ready? for the moment. Yeah, go ahead. Ready for me to take it. If I start to drag and sometimes, I mean, yeah, the internet's acting a little bit, this country internet's acting a little bit uh, crazy. Right. So if, if it gets really bad, Steve, just steal it back. I'll uh, right. restart and do it again. All right, as Steve said, a lot of small caps were making a move today, and interesting, Holly was able to catch a lot of those small caps. So uh, fortunately, uh, a strategy called uh, Mighty Mouse, as you can see, I have all the trades loaded for today in all three Hollies. These are every trade that came through uh, all segments. And you can see here, there were a lot of mighty mouses going off today. So, geez, by far, you know, the most uh, uh, most strategy that to produce the most trades uh, trades by far. So, interesting. There were some very good um, um, uh, some very good calls today. I'm going to go over probably about three of them here in a minute. But before I do, I want to show you something just. Uh, uh, just to refresh everybody's memory, or if you're in here for the first time, let you know what uh, what you're looking at here. Uh, these are our three Holly segments in the channel bar, right? And you see these profits uh, or losses in uh, the case of Holly Grail. Uh, this is based upon if you took a hundred shares of every one of Holly's trades. We note it down here in the uh, uh, in the AI strategies window, but 
so these would be your totals. So if you if you bought 100 shares of every trade, you would make uh, whatever that is. Uh, let's say $370, something like that. Uh, but uh, we have a, another method to calculate, which I like to use. And if I go into tools and go into options and go into my AI trade size, you're going to see that I have risk based stop loss. And what that means is I am willing to risk $100, okay, on uh, the maximum, if it goes to the stop price, it's I'm going to lose $100. You can see this bottom one down here. Okay, C's. Okay, risk off, close. It was a $100 loser. It went out and bought 400 shares and it went to the stop price and I lost, I would have lost 100. These are hypotheticals right here. Uh, but I, I would have lost $100. So with using this method, you can see it's much greater uh, PL based. And this is all the strategies, all 24 trades. If you would have bought 100 shares in risk on mode, it would have been 1315. Let's go through them all. Full risk, you would have made 1,000. And risk off, you would have made 853. So all pretty close. I love seeing that because that tells me uh, Holly was doing a great job pretty much uh, for every exit reason. Uh, whether you uh, got out for reduced risk, profit save, timed exit, these are what we call risk off or a stop. These are risk off conditions, okay? So in other words, if you take every exit that Holly takes on these risk off reasons, that would have been your total right there, 853. And you can see here, these are all the trades for the day. And anytime I see something like this, that is just beautiful. You can see the, uh, uh, I got it sorted by risk off profit here. You can see these great, incredible gains up here in your top three. And look down here in your bottom three, about a, a quarter of that. I can trust me. Any tr any trader would love to see PNL like that. You know, at the end of the day, where you're making uh, four or five times more profits than you are losses. So a great day, you know, from from Holly. And, th and this is not every day. I understand. Okay, but you know, I'm gonna pat ourselves when, when it's when it's bad. I'm gonna let you to tell you it wasn't that great, or just it was a tough market well, for whatever reason. I'm not gonna tout it, but it was a really good day today and a lot of it was because cause Holly was able to find those small cap stocks that were doing so well today. Uh, the best trade of the day, you probably saw a few of our guys tweeting it on uh, Twitter, uh, would have been uh, MNK. Let me click on it here in the daily and what I like about this one is the setup here going into it. Look at the volume. Okay, look at this gap down here, and then look at the volume over the last three days. Very strong. And then, of course, today we had the gap up, trigger, and then, boy, all day move. And in risk, oh, risk off, she got out for 156 winner. Of course, of course, this was only 400 shares, okay, because it was a kind of a volatile stock, so it was a 25 cent stop loss. But honestly, if, if I'm trading a two dollar stock I'm going to be going in with a lot more than 400 dollars 400 shares but nonetheless if you played by your rules and you bought 400 risk off 156 and look at this 466 in full risk on mode and risk uh, risk on so another great trade even though it wasn't from Monty Mouse is this DOMO yesterday hammer today strength this was a beautiful one and interesting, Steve, I was noticing the other day, she shorted it, sold it on this day, <laughs> which was a good trade, turns around and buys it on this day, which was a great trade. So you can see there, there was a buy right before the horseshoe, going to highs, and boy, mm -hmm. good relative volume, very nice day. Am I cutting out really bad, Steve? No, no you're not cutting out at all. Okay. I was just saying uh, well, that must have been an earnings play with that gap, maybe not. Well, we can take a look. Let's look at my single stock window and see. No, it was two days ago. The down gap was actually the earnings play. Is that what you're referring to? That's what I mean. Yeah, that, that gap, that gap down. Okay, I'm earnings sorry. Play. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Which is kind of surprising to see like on a third day like this to, to recoup much of it. But uh, I guess investors or buyers thought maybe that was uh, uh, too harsh of a beat down and saw value there. Gobble it up today for sure. Uh, but you're right, Steve. Yeah, that was uh, that was the earnings day right there. Uh, you never know; could have it could have been bad news, but that's what it was. It was earnings. So let's see if there's any more in my E and D P. Another pretty decent one here. 
Okay, there's your buy signal. Look at this beautiful go, pause, go. Even though that's kind of a uh, kind of a big range for a pause. It was still, you had a nice go yesterday, pause, and look at this buy signal right as it gets to yesterday's high. And boy, some really nice follow through in that one too. Another huge percentage gainer, okay? Uh, this M and K guys, I, I think uh, I just have risk off percentage up here, but I think that was probably about a 38 to 40% gain, uh, just looking at it with the naked eye. Huge, guys, you don't, you, know, you don't stumble across, you know, trades like that that's a, that's a big one and and this ENDP uh, another probably 10% there on risk on risk on percentage so I'm trying to add it up real quick uh, yeah that have been that that have been over 10% all right so great day for Holly uh, across the board I mean anytime you can see risk off with this many you know, profitable trades, only a few handful of negative trades. That means Holly was, uh, boy, humming on all cylinders, in all cylinders today, that's for sure. What is the Mighty Mouse strategy? Well, you think about it, Mighty Mouse, okay? Remember Mighty Mouse, uh, the old cartoon? He was a little guy, but he was very strong, okay? So it's looking for small caps uh, exhibiting uh, strength, just like old Mighty Mouse would. <laughs> but, uh, and remember, Mar Marguerite, if you don't know, you can always go to our website and go to the footer section and you can pull up. Uh, there's a uh, section down there in our footer section that, that says AI descriptions and the strategy descriptions. And it will it'll explain each one of them for you. And it will tell you that Mighty Mouse is looking for lower price stocks. Uh, all right, Steve. Uh, I think that's about it today. Just uh, just a really, really good day by Holly. And I love that right. uh, she was able to peg a lot of those small caps. All right. Sounds good. All right. Good crowd we have today. Let's bring it back to me. And uh, we're going to talk about the ill-fated trade of the week that did not work this week. Uh, I've got the Carvana chart posed, poised as it looked on Friday going into the weekend. Um, it was also at the extreme top of the A table, which if you haven't read about, it's in the, the ebook. A lot of times, uh, here's the gap after earnings and no attempt to fill that gap. And along the way, it was showing a history of personality of writing this 10-period uh, moving average for the most part. And so what I want to call attention to is, you know, the downside right off the bat. Again, the concept behind this was a very high short float, still is, and a break, you know, kind of a go, pause, go. It could have been, and you just mentioned that. Well, we didn't know that going into the weekend. It was a go, pause. Was Monday going to be the go follow through? Well, um, if it didn't, uh, we said in the uh, body of the email, the downside risk is this red 20-day moving average. And we'll get to that in a second. So day one and two. Uh, Monday and Tuesday, ugly. Um, it's about as bad as a trickery can get in terms of triggering the price action by a penny or two and then going into full sell mode. Now, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but I'm going to have a lot more to say on that when we get to this portion here. So I'll try and you know move through the, the CVNA idea trade, where it went wrong, where we could have done better, and then some of the uh, additional content in how bots trade might make a little bit more sense into what happened here and how we could have maybe um, mitigated some of the, the bad trade because bad trades are gonna show their heads every now and then. Um, so the first thing I wanna highlight, <clears throat> I'm gonna go to a five minute chart, and normally I like 15, but I think I can make the point bigger with a five, this orange line that I drew in here, okay, this is now corresponding to that 20 period moving average, which I said was going to be our downside risk. But here's the tricky part. I often say, and you guys know, that we want to see, um, we don't want to see a close below that moving average. Well, of course you're saying, well, Steve, how the heck am I gonna know when it's just been trading for an hour? Am I gonna know is this thing gonna close at the end of the day above this red line? I can't sit around and, and chance that. And, I don't blame you, I wouldn't either, and I wouldn't expect people to. When I say we'd like to see the price close above that moving average, normally we're gonna see a price action like this. Let me zoom in a little bit here on the five minute, because this is where it all broke down. You know, Yesterday, it triggered, and right up here it triggered, and then sold off, gave us a, de a decent bounce, and that decent bounce, by the way, was kind of off that 10 period moving average. So actually yesterday, coming into today, didn't really see this coming. I thought this was just going to be a little bit of noise. We'll talk about in a minute. 
But back again forward um, into today, here is today's action. And let's zoom in on this. Okay, so the, tr the orange line is transposed. So it's coming over from the daily. So this is our drop dead line. So all we can do is work with the information we have in real time. First five minutes, second five minutes, oh shit, we're getting close to this line. And then the third five minute candle breaches down and quickly back through. Now, I wanna really pay attention to this because this was what we normally see right here. Where this trade broke down was the subsequent candle. Now, what I mean we normally see is this is the intraday test, especially in the first 15 minutes of market, where you come down and the algorithms drive the price action down to these levels and test it. And the test is a quick flush down and a quick buying rush back up. Typically, if the stock is gonna be okay and if it's gonna work out, this is the point at which the green candles will start to build off of that level. And you can look back around lunchtime and say, oh yeah, that was no fun in the morning, but hey, it held, and let's see if it can hold by the end of the day and close. Well, the, f the fact that it didn't do that, it did the opposite. And so here is where the whole thing went awry. And here is where I would not blame anybody for saying, nope, I'm not sticking around for this. This thing's rolling back over. In other words, this event, that little spike, should have been a one-time event. If it's going to go back and start testing it and bleeding back down through it, we want no part of it. And so that's really the best I can give you in terms of how to manage something that's volatile, that's not working when it's going against us. So would have loved to have seen that moment right there. That could have been the moment, that candle, that could have been the moment of recovery, but it didn't. And um, it's easier to see on a five minute candle. Somebody's asking, would you stop using profanity in your presentation? Did I, did I swear? What did I say, Andy? I, I didn't hear it. I don't know if he's being funny. Uh... You know, if you're being funny, Robert, um, I don't think I swore, and if I do choose to swear, I'm going to swear. Um, so that is what's going on with the trade of the week in Carvana. No, you're not being funny. Okay, Robert. Well, then if you don't like it, you're welcome to leave. <laughs> All right. Sorry I even read that out loud. All right. So where are we going next? How do you avoid the noise in an intraday candle? Well, Jeff, that's, that's kind of what I was looking at. You know, significant levels of supply, resistance, support, pivot, whatever you want to call it. This is the kind of stuff I'm watching for. And when that broke down, that was all I really wanted to see. That was that was it. All right. And guys, I, I just want to add to this, you know, because I, uh... I also we, we also trade so we, we know how difficult it can be especially right now after all the volatility I mean things are kind of like Steve said are looking trying to look better now but trust me it's nasty out there and uh, you know obviously we don't have a magic wand we don't know Carvana is going to you know act like that and just all of a sudden just get hit hard one day I mean Twitter did just the opposite for us the other. I mean it tried to do it on the first day we entered but look what happened you know two days Thank later that thing's ripping up and yet and last week uh was uh was yeah was it was a sweet move and uh basically from 43 all the way up to around 46 or whatever it was but uh so you know look at that i mean that was a breakout and look at the pullback it had today so it's very nasty so these are these are maybe if you are going to take these trades maybe if you're looking at swinging just go in with a little small size maybe at first maybe take a starter position and then see if it's going to act right and then maybe you can add later but it's mm -hmm. uh it's difficult yeah. i'm glad you brought up that twitter because that reminded me that uh a, you know a day and a half a lot of times the market doesn't give us much more than a mm -hmm. day and a half in this case two and a half days twitter obviously was that goofy candle i think we had to talk about that on the last webinar about how okay mm -hmm. well you know that was ugly that was no fun but look this did the opposite thing that the cv uh, carvana trade did for us this one actually turned around and this is a great segue into what we're about to talk about the amazing noise that is in mm -hmm. this market. So let's get into that. You know, there, there was a time when Andy and I first started trading or as humans and pressing buttons against somebody else pressing a button. If they didn't have their hand on a Diet Coke or a Calzone, they weren't quick enough and it was a different market. But, you know, about 2006, 2007, SEC changed a lot of rules and allowed people 
um, or entities to create different exchanges. And so it became kind of like this hopping around game of arbitrage. Who could be quickest from one exchange to the other and make a penny and do that a couple thousand times a day? And that be kind of, it kind of became the new uh, market structure. So it changed a lot of things. And a lot, one of the main things it did was it created a lot of noise. And I'm, I'm going to go through and I'm going to give us a couple of examples. We're going to go back to a 15 minute time frame. And we're going to look at a few symbols that I pulled out. Some of them came out of this uh, washout bounce because those uh, those are very um, specific. But we're going to start with one that actually uh, Shake Shack. Andy actually watched this one uh, in real time today um, in a, a little smaller account that we just kind of play around in, but it's live money nonetheless. So when we talk a lot about looking left and finding that level of pain in which somebody uh, or in which the weak hands would finally capitulate and give up and cough up their long shares to um, somebody else or a different entity. A lot of times that happens at these critical levels of trying to break down through a certain level. So that happened today in, in Shake Shack. And if we actually scroll out a little bit, we can actually see, look at that blue line. You see how on a 15 minute chart, the level went just below those. There was no follow through to the downside. Now, this can be two things. This can be uh, an entry point for somebody who's looking for a possible entry and you're waiting, you're waiting. It's in no man's land here. It's in no man's land here. It's not ad adhering to those moving averages, but you look left and you see, ah, oh, look at these three days of buying. What if it goes down and tickles that level and tests it? And um, sure enough, that's exactly what it did. And I want to add something to that. If, I don't usually watch level two, but I was this particular time. And once the price action got right down here, there's that blue line transposed. You would not believe how wide the spread got. The spread went really wide. All of a sudden, there was like no interest. And um, that's another little kind of an interesting tell that's in the moment of a possible price turn. So the point is, there's two scenarios here. Maybe somebody bought this and they're really worried about where should I get to give this thing. You got to look left and say, where is the most obvious low? And again, these bots are programmed, so they have to hit their targets before they can reverse. That's just my that's just my theory. I'm sticking to it. And that's mm -hmm. my thesis. Because they can't reverse until they've achieved their targets. They're mm -hmm. written that way. If then, then achieve, return, reverse, whatever, however they talk to themselves. And so it shows up a lot of times where literally you just gotta knock out that price level and see what happens like a game of jenga right knock out that price level mm -hmm. and if it all crashes stay away but if it <laughs> doesn't and the tower just sits there and looks strong well that might be the moment in which somebody could get in it's also the moment at which somebody could decide hey i'm glad i didn't sell there and panic just because it broke the nickel below these these because that's what the market or the market making algos want you to think hey look we just broke this level down here how many shares can we get down at this level for whatever reason, that's just the way it seems to happen. Now, I've got a couple other examples. And this was a real real time example. It happened in real time. And Andy saw it. I looked at a few other ones that were um, kind of interesting uh, for shakeouts. Let's see. Um, I think KN was one of them, actually. OK, so looking at KN here, this is a, uh, um, a stock that uh, showed up on one of these scans that I had as a reversal. Looking back, what's the low of this candle? Oh, let's see, it's 21.12. What's the low of today's dip? It's 21, so it went 12 cents below. And again, if we go to the 15 minute, we can start to see how they do this, right? Mm -hmm. There's the level right there. I'm gonna draw that line. And they went through it by just a few pennies. Look at that, no fault. These, they, and they happen quick. So again, if this is something you're watching, you're watching, you're thinking, that's a no man's land. I bet this thing goes down and tries to, we call it shake the trees and see if they can get any loose hanging fruit to come out. And when they don't, the spread widens out in real time and you might get a great entry at these levels if you're watching. So, you know, keep that in mind if you're looking for something like that and you don't feel like it's the right entry, look left on the daily chart and think back as to where is the most recent low candle. And if this price action's in the neighborhood, it's probably gonna go down there and tickle that level and see if they can run any stops. So again, that can be a great entry point. It can also be a great decision point if you're long and you're underwater and you're, you're losing money, but you, you're getting so tired of selling down there at that level only to watch the market reverse and go back higher without you. And you feel like you got hung upside down and shaken out and all the change come out of your pocket. Um, that's just uh, no fun. And once that happens to you a few times, you remember it. And so it can be a great way to sit back, you know, sit on your hands for a minute, take a deep breath, 
and watch and see what happens. In the case of Carvana, it didn't work out for us. It rolled back over and got soft and we had to get out. Um, another example I had written down here, let's see, I think BRKR was something of interest. Okay, so this low right here of this of today, I'm looking at today's typical drive down right in the morning. This is how they do it, drive down in the morning. The low of this candle is 4082. Let's go back over here. The low of this candle is 4086. What do you know? Took it out by four cents, right? This little anomaly, this obvious anomaly, and they usually do it early in the morning and you feel really horrible when you're the person who sold out because your reason for selling was that it took out this candle back here by just a few cents. When in reality, that seems to be the way in which these market making bots are programmed to basically just throw elbows left and right. And they're doing this and they're creating noise. They did, they, they did the same thing to us in Carvana. They ticked above that new high and there was no follow through. So the price collapsed and the trade collapsed. Um, Market making algos just have a funny way of sweeping back and forth, trying to take out as many short term traders as they can. So if you're trying to chase the herd and be along with the herd and be late to the herd, you're probably going to get whipsawed out. You've got to be the one who's contrary in the most contrarian type of ways. Mm -hmm. There might be one more example and we can move on. TSG, yeah, this is just a short one, but it, it took out two days. You know, there's the low back there, 1592, and the low today is 1585. Um, so when we say look left on the daily chart, it's it's interesting. We can see areas of interest. And when you're close enough and you look over there and you say, oh boy, are they gonna, they meaning the market making algos, are they gonna try and drive this price down? You can bet your bottom dollar, they probably are gonna do it because they're in the neighborhood and they usually do that. And they can't reverse until they get their, their confirmation um, mm -hmm. formula to to actually pan out and and I want to add something to this segment it, it, guys when you start seeing action like this because I'm seeing it in a lot of places and I think there's some opportunity uh, uh, I saw it uh, in PINS uh, this morning after it just been got, gotten just clobbered uh, and Steve, one of our one of one of the ones that used to be on the uh, high on the composite rating, that was one of your favorites. It, look at E N P H and look at the gap mm -hmm. fill. I got an alert set there on that gap fill on the daily, okay. and I, wow. I I bet you anything that thing that fills that gap. And when, usually when they come this close, they get there. Uh -huh. so. Yeah, and yeah. this is funny because this is one that was a real good one from the ebook. Uh, it was discussed, mm -hmm. actually wrote the ebook back uh, back here. We identified a lot of strength in that one back here. And this is really what Carvana looked like, um, you know, going into, they had the big gap and trading higher. This, it could have gone either way, but here we are. Yep. Some of them, some of them work and some of them don't. That's right. All right, so hopefully that kind of makes sense as to, you know, who's running the ship, the algorithms, they're running the ship and they usually need to go, they're, they're OCD as I say, they need to go down to that price level, flick the light bulb a few times, see if there's any uh, change in direction and then that's the decision point at which a lot of people um, should be you know, looking at. Mm -hmm. All right, how many days they go back? You know, Wally, some days they, sometimes they go a lot of days back and it just depends. Some days it's obvious, some days you know, there's one day that stands out, um, it could be a few days, it could be a few weeks, never really know some days some of those some, sometimes some, uh, some of those are some of the best bottom fishing easy for me to say mm -hmm. charts where they go down and they blast down that 52 week low that's everybody's looking at with a big reversal candle and then that's it the light bulb the light switch has been flicked a few times and it might be ready for a reversal yep all right so um looking at time here last week um I went through some sectors and I know Waleed was there and I know a few other people were there. You guys remember what sector I was really high on last week? It was actually part of our price alerts too. It was, it was the OIHs. Close, Gabrielle. It was, yeah, really, it was, REITs were a couple weeks ago. Last week, it was the OIHs. Let's take a look. Remember, we, we set some price alerts. Andy was not with us last week. It was Jamie and myself. But one of the best 10% winners, OIH, sector play, could be building a base. Trigger confirms. Well, there was our big base. The green line was our trigger confirming. And yeah, we had a nice, beautiful sector mm -hmm. base there in the oil services. So um, let's check into the REITs just because. Let's see how they're doing. 
Uh, they were doing great, um, but they did pull back. The REITs were looking good last week, too. You're right there, Gabrielle. Um, But two weeks ago, I, I mentioned them as well. Well, I've got another one. I'm not going to go through every single sector here because a lot of them are just redundant. But um, wow, retail, strong. Um, there was one, and uh, you know, I tried to go through a few charts for some possible alerts to be set up today, and um, they just a theme just kept popping up, and that is i'm going back to silver um the silver chart of a uh the silver couple things we talked last week about how it just got way ahead of itself and what happens when you get way ahead of yourself in a parabolic move you really have no other choice but you just reset and come back to earth but in this case it came back to earth a really nice looking trend line there except for my drawing um it was looking a lot better before the close quite honestly i had a nice bit of little green candle there going into an hour before the close so it didn't close as strong as i would hoped maybe some of that uh, other apple and retail stuff didn't help with the close but you know stocks like pause um and and ag we're going to come back and revisit they had they've had a really nice reset um and i think that this major trend is still going to stay intact but i have to definitely um, put a, a a disclaimer out there because tomorrow what is tomorrow andy the big event right kind of a big event the Fed once again. Yep. The Already? Fed. And, Gosh. Yeah. yeah. And gold and silver can certainly take their cues from Fed um, after two o'clock Eastern tomorrow. So I am going to set some alerts here uh, going into um, you know is the Fed week. minutes or is it Fed minutes or the uh, rate change possible? What I'm pretty it? sure it's the rate change. Okay. Two day okay. meeting and uh, Wednesday is the day they do it. Gosh, I'm like we just had that. <laughs> the Fed is next week. Am I wrong? Am I just totally? I think off? you might be. It seems like we had it not too long ago. Tony, Tony might be much more on the ball than I am. For some reason, I thought I heard somebody say tomorrow was Fed Day, 18th. Okay, so all right. Thank, thank you, you for clarifying that. That's why we, that's why we do that. Um, so there is no threat of volatile moves tomorrow at two o'clock Eastern because there is no Fed. All right, good to know. Um, but nonetheless, I've gone through a lot of sectors and I just feel like, you know, a lot of them would be chasing. You'd be chasing steel, you'd be chasing retail, you'd be chasing financials. A lot of green moves out there. And so where is, uh, actually he looks tired with that big wick, where is mm -hmm. the uh, low risk, high reward um, returns? And I think it's still in silver. And what's also interesting is gold didn't look as good. Gold just put in another crappy day and they're kind of in no man's land. If we play our little game here, um, even though it's kind of hard with a with a commodity to do that, but we we would look back maybe on this wick right there, the low mm -hmm. of 139.35. We can come in here and say, well, let's put a price alert in roughly at 139.40, and we might be alerted tomorrow that it's trying to take out that low. But again, this works better on stocks, not on 24-hour market commodities exactly. like gold. And you know, we're probably going to get some sort of a gap either direction uh, in gold or silver tomorrow. But I just feel like this major trend is still intact. It got way ahead of itself and silver is still relatively stronger than gold. Um, I just see some interesting setups. So <clears throat> we will move forward on those regardless. Um, here was last week's price alerts. We can take a look at a few real quick. The oil service had a nice push. Um, this was uh, a short. How about yes. that? We threw a short in there. Look at that and that even worked. 9% nice to the downside. Um, another follow through. You know, why couldn't Carvana do that? I don't know. Yeah. I gotta watch my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Triggering people. Uh, APO, uh, phew, nice trigger, <laughs> speaking of trigger, and then just sideways <laughs> action. So really never, nothing really painful about any of these that we set last week. So let's go ahead and wipe them out and uh, do them again. Delete those 11. I've got a few ideas. Um, we will start with, um, let's see, what are we going to start with? I'm going to start with one, H-A-E. Yeah, this was one of those um, washout bounces I liked. Now, this is interesting. It, I would have loved to have seen it tag. What's the low of this candle? 81, 115.81, but we only got to 115.93. But that candle tells me kind of all I need to know that it didn't even get close and it couldn't get to that level. So it kind of throws off my theory that it has to touch that level. I'm just going to say in this case, it was close enough because that was a really nice washout bounce. So I'm going to put a, an alert at the high uh, 121.53 and we'll see if there's any follow through on this one. All right, the next one was, um, 
This was from the A table. It's the only one I could find that I liked from the A table. Hopefully some of this congestion, again, hopefully it's not a Carvana type setup, but um, I'm gonna go through and look at yesterday's high and get kind of a mini head start. 49.76, which also is being drawn there by that uh, blue line, the trade ideas blue line, kind of seeing the same thing I'm seeing there. Uh, the only one I could find from the bull flag alerts that Andy has created, um, sell gene, I kind of like what's going on here, definitely filled the gap, um, almost kind of a little wedge. I'm just going to say if it can take up today's high, we'll do some follow through. So that would be 85. All right, and then it looks like that's it. We're going over to uh, gold and silver land. All right, WPM used to be silver Wheaton. It's now um, WPM. I'm just gonna go off of today's candles on these. If we can get a reversal candle, it'd be good enough for a higher low on the trend line. And that's the thing I'm really keyed on. They all kind of have that same trend line look. Yeah, mm -hmm. they're not perfect. They're not perfectly lined up here on the moving averages, but look at this congestion back here. I, I can draw that for you guys. You can see that prior resistance should become future support in here. So if we can take out today's high, that will be our trigger, which would be 2844. I nailed it. The next one is going to be pause. It's very um, same kind of a thing happening back here. Good support for the most part. Were you going to say something? Did you, did you mean to put a short in the cell gene? No. Oh. So let's thank you for catching that. Okay. Why did that happen? I don't know. The price alert. Long. Hmm. I don't know why that ever happened. It's That's weird. really weird. Did it trigger after after hours? Maybe it did. Maybe it's triggering after hours. We'll move it up a little bit. There it goes. There you go. Okay. So pause. Did we do that one? No, we need to mark up Panheim Silver. And I'm going to do again today. The high of today was uh, 1769. So we'll do that as the trigger. Um, more. Um, AGD, another typical uh, name that's familiar. <laughs> nice bottoming wake <laughs> yesterday. Look at what? You don't get them loaded up on precious metals. <laughs> I, that's all I'm seeing. That's all I like. I'm sorry. Everything else is a chase. Did you see all these? Look at all yeah, these. Yeah, I. Chase. You know what? I I just I do not like chasing chasing stocks in this market. I really don't. So I'm looking for a better entry. I'm looking for yep, gold. I agree. Sports, risk, reward. Yep. Yesterday's candle was beautiful. I would have loved to have seen a build off of yesterday, but maybe it was a day early. We'll take it, same thing. Today's high candle will be our trigger, 10.03. And we got two more, and these are a little bit more obscure. I found these on other scans, and wouldn't you know, I found them on the, on the pullback, on the 50-day pull, pullback to the 50. The only ones I liked, Andy, just happened to be metals. Interesting names, okay. too. FNV is one of them. Um, Franco Nevada. Okay, they do uh, gold ore mining. Okay, right on the trend line. Looks like everything else. Let's take the high of today. 94.81. And the last one is also looks like another last silver name, which I've never heard of until now because it showed up on a scan. And it's a small cap stock as well. Um, lesser known, but we'll just throw a small cap in here. Let's use the high of the prior day to get a head start on this one or a confirmation, I should say. So we'll go 380 is gonna be our, our trigger. Perfect. And so those are the working alerts for the week. Yes, there's a heavy, heavy um, balance of uh, metals in there, but everything else, again, I see as a chase right now, sector-wise. It's been uh, an interesting couple of days. And so I'm looking for the pullback, especially you know after that trade of the week failed up there, I'd like to see something a bit more uh, you know, risk reward possible. So. I will open up the chat and drop in the uh, price alerts and we can bring in Scott and uh, finish up any announcement we have. And there it's in the chat window now. Anybody can have the uh, have the alerts if they want them. Any thoughts on the Russell 2000? Yeah, Jeff, we did the IWM. It's leading the market today. Yesterday and today it was leading. It was, uh, the small caps are doing really well, but again, we're, we're going to run into a pretty big level up there, which I've been drawing for a long time, that first orange line. So it could be clear sailing in the IWM up here until 
roughly. And I think that uh, could happen because mm -hmm. a lot of rotation seems to be happening. Money has to be put to work and they're finding value in the small caps all of a sudden. All right, so that's all I got. I'll bring up the slideshow for Scott for any Unmuted. announcements and see you guys next week. Yeah, thanks guys. Um, big news, we got the summit coming up late October. Uh, there's still time to get tickets to come to San Diego. Just go to trade-ideas.com slash summit or sign up for the live stream at slash live stream. Just go to either one of those pages to see an up-to-date list of the speakers. Uh, we're going to add some more before uh, time comes, but we've already got a fantastic lineup, so do check those pages out. Uh, we've also got a new series of ebooks. Uh, both Andy and Steve contributed chapters to. There's three different topics. Each topic has two chapters, so go to trade-ideas.com slash setup to get the three volumes. Put in your email address and download them today if you don't have them yet. Uh, we've got a podcast, Search for Trade Ideas podcast, wherever you listen to podcasts to get the newest ones. Um, we just released a new one on Friday talking about the paper trading that's upcoming. Uh, you might have heard some rumors about that, so hear what is coming up. Uh, we've got a code, good this month, save on ideas, all caps. You can use that either to start a subscription, get brokerage plus license, or do an upgrade and save 15% off anything. So just write that down and do the upgrade before the end of the month using that code, and you can save. Follow us on Facebook at uh, facebook.com slash tradeideaspro, and you can also follow Steve Gomez on Twitter at todaytrader. Also look for at tradeideas. And uh, email any of your questions to info at trade-ideas.com. That's the best place to send all your questions. It goes into our help desk software. So thanks, Steve. Thanks, Andy. Thank you all. Get the recording up later on tonight or tomorrow. I'll send you an email. Great. See you next week. All right. All right. See you Thursday, everybody. Thanks. Bye-bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye.